Now today we're gonna to be making the classic Latin dish, ropa vieja. Is that too much? Ropa vieja. And it starts with flank steak. Now ropa vieja translates to old clothes. And it comes from a story of a homeless man miraculously making stew out of his old clothes. Highly unlikely, but I love a good story. And the flank steak is perfect because of how the grains run down the meat. They're very pronounced, so after slow cooking, which is what this dish is about, those fibers shred nicely into a dish and apparently look like old clothes. But if that's what your old clothes look like, stay away from me. Now usually I just cut this into quarters, just to break it down into smaller pieces. This is a larger piece, so I'm gonna take the tapered ends at the top and the bottom, and then I'll just like trim a little piece off there. I'll trim the end off there, and that'll leave me with a nice center cut that I will then quarter. Then all we're gonna do is season them before we sear them, but until then we can set them off to the side. Next up we've got all the vegetables and aromatics. We've got some garlic cloves. You only really need like one large green bell pepper and one large red, but these guys are tiny, so I just got two. An onion, and I think that's all we gotta chop up. Now just like the beef shreds into these long strands, we're gonna wanna cut our vegetables the same way. Not so much the garlic. We're basically gonna cut these vegetables the same way we would cut both of these things for fajitas. How thick you slice them is up to you. You just kinda wanna make sure you cut them around the same size, just so they look uniform in the dish, and you don't have big pieces here and little pieces there. there to take about three garlic cloves, cut them in half, and then slice them very thin, get them into a little bowl. Now we've got our vegetables and our aromatics. We've got our beef. I've got a cup of beef stock. And then I got one of these muti cans of baby Roma tomatoes. A 14 ounce can is a good product as well. That's gonna add that tomatoey base which is what we stew this beef in, but it also needs some acidity, some brightness. So traditionally red wine vinegar goes in, so we're gonna use that, and I also have some pickled jalapenos opened, so I'm gonna use that for a little more acidity and spice along with their liquid. Then we're going in with a whole bunch of spices, some cumin, some coriander, some oregano, some paprika, some adobo, and some sazon, and of course a chicken bouillon cube. The secret to all good Latin food. And then a bay leaf. Now we're ready to cook. Now before we deal with the stove top, we need to preheat the oven to 300 degrees. Now in a large Dutch oven on high heat, we're gonna add a touch of oil, and once the oil's hot, we're gonna season those steaks generously with salt, and then we're gonna add them into the hot Dutch oven and sear them very well. And we're gonna do this in batches if we need. You wanna take your time and make sure that each side gets a really dark sear, flip them, and then brown the other side. And once it does, you wanna get those out of the pan, finish up searing any pieces that have not been seared yet. And you've got all those great little dark bits built up on the bottom of the pan. Then we're gonna throw in the onions, we're gonna hit them with some salt, and we're gonna stir those up, and the moisture in those onions is almost gonna deglaze the pan. Once those onions have softened, we're gonna throw in the peppers, hit those with a little bit of salt, and just stir those in until they get nice and soft. Then we can throw in the garlic, cook that until aromatic, and then we can start with the spices. We're gonna go in with one tablespoon of paprika, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of ground coriander, two teaspoons of the sazon, two teaspoons of the adobo, one teaspoon of dried oregano, and one packet of the chicken bouillon cube. Mix that all together, then we can squirt in about a tablespoon or two of the tomato paste, work that in, get that mixed in and caramelized, and then we can go in with the beef stock, throw in that can of tomatoes, rinse it out with a little bit of water to clean it and add that back into the pan, and then about a tablespoon or two of red wine vinegar. We can also throw in the jalapenos with a little bit of that juice they're packed in, and along with that bay leaf. We can mix it all up, get it nice and bubbling, add the flank steak back into the pot, make sure it's nice and covered, add those resting juices as well, and then we're gonna cover the pot, throw that into that 300 degree oven, and we're gonna cook it for about two and a half hours, but we're gonna cook it in two stages, and the first stage is gonna take two hours. Now when that cooks, I gotta save you money on groceries this year, thanks to our sponsor today, Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone with guaranteed savings every day. They offer all the same products you'd find at your local market, but at wholesale prices. You can think of it like the wholesale prices at Costco mixed with the products of Whole Foods. And it can help you save a ton of money. They have an amazing selection of organic grocery items, 
pantry items like jarred tomato sauce. And they even have non-toxic beauty items for my sensitive skin. And whether you're gluten-free, vegan, or keto, Thrive has something for you, all below retail prices. And if you find a better price somewhere else, Thrive's gonna match it. Orders over $49 are shipped free, and they have two options for memberships. A monthly membership that costs $12 a month, and a yearly membership that costs $59.95. That's just $5 a month, and you will make back your annual membership in savings. And if you don't, Thrive Market will credit you the difference. And I'm gonna save you even more money if you go down to my link down in the description or visit thrivemarket.com backslash not another cooking show. Thrive Market's gonna give you 30% off your first order plus a free gift worth $60 when you join Thrive Market today. So hit the link down in the description and let's jump back into the recipe. Now after two hours, we can check on the beef. It should be nice and tender and cooked through. So what I wanna do is take the lid off and allow it to cook uncovered to almost caramelize and reduce a little bit more. I'm also gonna raise the temperature of the oven to 375. And so now I'm gonna allow that to cook for around 30 minutes. What we're gonna serve the Ropa Vieja with is long grain rice. But what we're gonna do is take this white long grain rice and turn it into yellow rice. We're also gonna make some Maduros or plantain. We're gonna roast these. And what you wanna find is one that looks like it's an overripe banana. But for a plantain, still firm. A yellow one would be good enough to fry into chips. One that's like this, still is hard, it's not mushy and soft, and this is gonna be what you want to roast or to fry into like those soft, sweet plantains. So we're gonna get this prepped first. I get a little sheet tray. I just wanna cut the tips off at an angle. I'm gonna take the back of my knife and just score the plantain to remove the skin. Then you just wanna kinda cut them at an angle on the bias to create as much surface area as you can to get it caramelized on a baking sheet. Then I'm just gonna throw those onto a sheet tray, hit them with a little bit of olive oil and some salt and get them mixed up. And then I'm gonna sort of orient them onto one side because there's not too much and just squeeze that next to the beef in the oven. It can roast at 375 as well. Now onto the rice. I'm gonna take some long grain rice. Since it's just me, I'm gonna do about a cup of it. And I'm gonna add that to a bowl. Now we need to wash this. Now all you gotta do is fill it up with water and you're gonna see it foamy and all the starch cloudy up the water. So I'm just gonna pour all of that initial water out, then refill it, and then like an abrasive with each other, rub them together to get as much starch as I can released from the rice grains themselves. And just repeat that process until when I rub the rice together, the water remains relatively clear after doing so. That's a good indication most of the starch is rinsed off. And then I'll strain all the rice and set it off to the side. Now to turn this rice into yellow rice, which is my favorite thing growing up. And I had never really done it before. I grew up my entire life only eating that box of Goya yellow rice. But I learned how to make it homemade and it is so much better and very easy. To get it yellow, we're using turmeric. We're using a little bit of adobo, some dehydrated onions, some dehydrated garlic, and of course, a little chicken bouillon cube. And then for one cup of rice, we're going to need one and a half cups of water. Now after about 15 minutes, I give the plantains a check and I rotate them to get them nicely browned on all sides. Then I'm gonna pop that back into the oven and then I'm gonna pull the pot of Ropa Vieja out, give those pieces of meat a flip so the other sides can caramelize and get those back in until they finish cooking for another 15, 20 minutes. Now we can get started on the rice. In a small pot on medium high heat, I'm gonna add a little knob of butter and I'm gonna get that melted before tossing in the washed white rice. I'm gonna stir that into the butter and try and bring out a little roastiness out of the rice. After 30 seconds to a minute, I can start adding the seasoning. One teaspoon of dehydrated onion, one teaspoon of dehydrated garlic, two teaspoons of adobo powder, two teaspoons of turmeric, We'll stir that all together, get that nice and toasted. And then after about 30 seconds, we can add the bouillon cube plus one and a half cups of water. I will say this brand of rice was the first time I used it. Followed the box instructions of one and a half cups of water to one cup of rice, but it came out a little al dente. So it says on the package that two more tablespoons of water if it's a little underdone, which is kind of odd to put on a package, but you're gonna have to adjust based on the type of rice you use. Bring it up to a boil, drop it down to a simmer, place a lid on and cook it for 15 minutes 
it on very low. Now our Ropa Vieja should be done. It should be caramelized on all sides and it should be falling apart. The strands of meat should just be tearing just by gravity. Now we can just sort of shred it all up, mix it all together, and that's ready to go. We can place a lid on and place that off to the side. Now, after about 30, 40 minutes of roasting, the plantains are nicely browned and cooked all the way through and soft. Those are ready to go. We can set those on the back burner, keep them warm while we deal with our rice, which has now been cooking for 15 minutes. So what I'm going to do is turn the heat off, let it rest for another five minutes. After five minutes, take the lid off, fluff the rice, put the lid back on and let it steam for another five minutes before serving. And then we can get a plate out. We can pack that yellow rice into a little mold with a little bowl. Place that onto the plate, flip it, knock it out, and you should have a really beautiful round of yellow rice. Then we can go ahead and arrange the plantains around the mound of rice. And then we can just go put a big mound of that delicious, tender ropa vieja. It's such a perfect little meal. The heavily spiced beef with the sweet plantains just go so well together. And that rice just takes me back to my childhood. This is without a doubt a recipe you need to have in your playbook. Recipe is gonna be down in the description. I hope you enjoy it. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.